welcome to this episode of ADF Architecture TV. I'm Frédéric Desbiens, a member of the ADF product management team. Today, I talk about character encoding. This is a really, really important topic. You may have the best layouts in the world, you may have the best application in the world and ruin everything just because of that. As you may know, my name contains accentuated characters and there's nothing more insulting than to get an email or access a web page where my name is completely mangled up because of incompatible character encodings. This is really, really something that is easy to prevent if you plan properly, but at the same time can completely ruin your reputation if not handled properly. So, Let's have a look at what ADF can do for you and what features and preferences in JDeveloper you need to set in order to manage proper encoding for your applications. First, let's think a bit about the concept of character encoding. Basically, every word is made of characters. The set of all possible characters in a specific locale or alphabet is called a character set. We talk about a coded character set when we assign a number to represent each and every character. And this number is called a code point. Inside computers, code points are represented over one or more bytes, depending which encoding we are using. Thus, it means that the code is something you use in order to represent characters inside a computer. Thus, the encoding is the key you need in order to decipher the code. And this is why, suppose you receive a file and you expect it to be encoded in ASCII, but it is encoded in UTF-8 and it contains characters that are not part of standard English, then the contents of the file will be completely garbled. And this is normal because your text editor expects one set of codes to represent characters, but in fact is getting another. To make things a bit more clearer, here is a real life example of character encoding at work. So on this slide, I have represented three different characters in four distinct character encodings. So the encodings are first ASCII, which is one of the oldest character sets used on personal computers. We've got Layton 1, which is a Windows character set that supports most Western European languages, like French and German. We've got also Unicode in the guise of UTF-8 and UTF-16. Both UTF-8 and UTF-16 can represent the same characters. The difference between the two is that UTF-8 is variable uh, length encoding, whereas UTF-16 is fixed length encoding, which means basically UTF-8 is more efficient than UTF-16 because the most common characters are represented on a single byte. Now, the three characters we've got here are one from the English alphabet, one from the French alphabet, as well as a Japanese character. And as you can see, there were some ascendant compatibility measures taken. So, in ASCII, the letter A of the English alphabet is represented as 41, and it is represented as 41 in all the other character sets. Uh, the only difference is that in UTF-16, you've got a null byte, an empty byte, before the 41. For the French character, obviously, uh, it's not uh, available in pure US ASCII, but it is available in Layton 1, and we have the same, uh, the very same uh, encoding in Layton 1 and UTF-16. And the UTF-8 encoding is different, however. And finally, the Japanese character cannot be represented in either ASCII or Layton 1 and can be expressed in UTF-16 or 8 only. 
One of the most important things to remember about character encoding in the context of a typical web or mobile application is that it can be found at various layers of the application source code itself and various layers of infrastructure as well. So when you consider to target a specific locale, a specific alphabet and use a specific encoding to represent the characters, you need to make sure that your operating system will support that. And today it's not a problem because most of the commonly used operating systems will support Unicode. But in the past it was a problem in some cases. So before embarking on a project, you need still need to make sure that your operating system will support the character encoding. Then a typical application will usually access files on the file system and write data in the database. So in both cases, you need to configure those essential pieces of infrastructure to support the character set or multiple character sets that your application will use. Also, in the case of Java application, the application server must support the character encoding that you are targeting. And finally, in the case of ADF web application or ADF mobile application, it's really important to remember that you need to configure JDeveloper to use a proper character encoding to ensure that international characters will be represented correctly and to encode your AMX or JSF pages properly in order for them to maintain correct display of the characters. Before we jump in JDeveloper, let's take a step back and talk a bit about Oracle Database. Oracle Database supports a wide array of internationalization settings, but of them, two are of the utmost importance. First one is the character set. Basically, you need to ensure when you select the character set for your database that it will support the whole array of alphabets, locales, languages that your application will support. It's really, really important. And because of that, in fact, our recommendation in the official documentation for the database is to always install new instances using Unicode. So the actual character set name is AL32 UTF-8. And in this case, UTF-8 is really, really important because it's more efficient, as we've said, than UTF-16 or UTF-32. The other setting is the sort order. So there are many, many sort orders available in Oracle database. And they are uh, of three distinct types. The first type is binary. Basically, the binary sort order will not check at the character themselves, but at their numerical representation. So basically, it means you will sort your query results according to the code points of the characters and not the characters themselves. Then you have monolingual and multilingual sort orders. And Typically, monolingual sort orders will perform better than multilingual sort orders, but multilingual sort orders will ensure that if you are sorting query results in very, very different uh, languages, then the database will be able to sort them properly. Obviously, uh, the binary sort order is the most performing of all, but then uh, if your data is using characters outside US ASCII, you may get weird results when trying to sort the results. In the demonstration, I will show you where to find the various character encoding settings in JDeveloper. But if there's one thing you should remember about it, it is that from now on, for everything you do, you should choose the UTF-8 encoding unless you have a very, very precise reason not to do so. Why UTF-8? Because it's the most efficient version of Unicode, and it is efficient since it uses variable length encoding. Unicode uh, will offer you the benefit of supporting nearly all of the languages currently in use on the planet. And in addition, 
UTF-8 and Unicode benefit from widespread support in all modern OSs and web browsers. And this means you will be able to reach the widest user base possible. I will now show you where to find the various character encoding settings in JDeveloper. Here I'm using 12C, the latest and greatest, but the settings are exactly in the same place for 11G release 1 and release 2. So the first place to look is the JDeveloper preferences. So in the preferences in the environment category, you've got the encoding settings. So this is the character encoding for all new files. So whenever you install a new copy of JDeveloper, you should be sure to go there and change the setting ideally to UTF-8 and that way everything will be all right whatever language you are targeting. So in this case it's using the default CP1252 so I locate UTF-8 in the list. All right. Okay now there are two other settings that must be taken into account and those settings are hidden in the project properties. So for each project you have in your applications, you will see you have a compiler category and this compiler category contains a character encoding setting as well. This is for, you know, the character encoding of the various class files that will be output. So, for consistency reasons, uh, you should uh, make sure that this matches the general setting for JDeveloper. So, in this case, I select UTF-8 as well. It's really important um, to get this setting right, especially if you are using Java classes or resource bundles, because that way, if you put special characters in your Java classes, then uh, those characters will be displayed properly only if the character encoding for the file output by the compiler is correct. So, as I said, this must match the general setting in JDeveloper preferences. You have also another setting, and this is the GSP setting here. This is the default character encoding for all GSP fragments and JSP pages. And once again, it's important to have a sensible default, but in recent releases of JDeveloper, it's UTF-8 by default, which means that if I create a new fragment, for example, so I will create a new ADF page fragment, and if I have a look at the source, you see that the encoding is UTF-8 by default. So those are the three places you should look for specifically uh, character encoding settings in JDeveloper. Thank you for watching this episode of ADF Architecture TV. Next time I will cover resource bundles. Getting character encoding right was very, very important, but the actual text that you will display in the screens need to be stored somewhere. And this is what resource bundles are all about. So once again, thank you for watching and see you soon.